Okay. Uh, let's go to the NBL blitz. Yep. Bryce, I'm just going to give you the floor on Alex R. Cause I know that Alex R is one of your favorites. And I also love Alex R. I would have Alex R as a top three guy right now on my board. Um, I'm like totally with you on SAR. But I will give you the floor on Alex R. Explain to me why Alex R has become one of your favorite prospects in this 2023 or 2024. I apologize. NBA draft. So I was feeling very self-conscious when I first turned on the Alex R film, Sam. Because I'm watching SAR and I'm like, man, this dude isn't not not this NBL Blitz film from the like before all of this. And I'm texting everybody I know, Alex Sar, what do you think? Alex Sar, what and some people don't even have him in the first round. I'm like, oh my gosh, like, am I just an idiot as an evaluator? And then I feel a little bit justified after the Ignite games where he looked really good, and then these MBL Blitz games where he's looked really good. I told you this the other day. Every time the film comes on, I'm just like, this dude is massive. He is long, but he moves so well, Sam. He moves extremely well. I think the jumper looks okay. It's got to come around more. I'm not saying it's a finished product by any means, but I've seen him knock down some pick and pops where I'm like, that was smooth. The footwork looked good. He looked confident. I like it. I've seen him go off the bounce for one, two dribbles, spin back over you know his right shoulder fade away, and it looked smooth. It looked good. I do like as I watch him more, I start to critique him more, Sam. So I'd like to get mm. your perspective on this. I, I, I would like to see a little bit more finishing in the lane, like a little bit yeah. more offensive rebound, put back, pick and roll lob threat, rim run, get out and transition and beat everybody down the floor. I don't want him to turn into too much of a perimeter player. I love the DHO stuff. I love him showcasing the passing, but I want to see a little bit more of that. And then I know you love him on this end of the floor too, but defensively, he does a lot of really good things as well. Alex R is a joke defensively. Like he is, he is so, so advanced for a teenager uh, playing in a professional league. The way he covers ground defensively is absolutely remarkable. His instincts to rotate across in scramble situations, I think are phenomenal. He is so consistently available to his teammates. Uh, and then on top of it, he has the, that like ticking clock in his brain where he understands when the shot clock is going down and down I love, yeah, and when to blitz guys, right? And just use his length and athleticism to throw them off. I, I thought that was really, really fun and impressive. He did it a couple of times at the NBL Blitz where I was like, oh yeah, like this guy just like has a real feel for the game and an innate understanding of the moment that he's on the court and situational awareness of being on the court in those situations. Well, what you're starting. To, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say real quick. What you're starting to see is offensive players being aware of him. And that's not something that shows up in the stat sheet, but you can see guys rushing shots or not taking shots. So there was an example in the Perth Adelaide game, uh, his hard hedges, a ball screen. So he hard hedges, Sam, which means he steps which, out. Go ahead. You know, not not his fault. I want to be clear. I, I would like to see him hard hedge a bit less. Sure. Because uh, I think it takes him a bit out of help position more often. But John really is a really good coach. I, I don't want to, you know, disparage John. I, I think he does a really good job. Um, but yeah, I would like to see those hedges maybe a little bit less pronounced. Sure. I, I don't mind it as much because I like to see the versatility, but I know what you're saying in terms of you getting him away from the basket, but that's what makes this play so impressive is he hard hedges. They throw a lob and the offensive big rolling to the basket tries to like catch and quick finish because he knows Sar is tracking him from behind from a hard hedge outside the three point line. And he's so nervous that he misses the layup and blows it because he knows Sar can cover ground. Like that's just the things that show up when you watch the game that you're like, he's making an impact even beyond the, how many ever blocks he averaged in the NBL blitz. Yeah. Uh, it's he's not a guy where the numbers are always going to pop. It's the tape that yep. pops. It's the amount of ground. Like, like you said, like that goes to my point of ground coverage, right? Hard hedging, then flying back to rotate, recover, contest, right? 
rim protection wise, I think his instincts uh, rotationally on the backside are pretty good. I think he knows where to be. I think he knows how he has to get there. I think he is active and aggressive. Uh, rebounding wise, I think he does a pretty good job out of his area. Uh, I, I almost like him more out of his area than like in his area Agreed. sometimes. Yes. Yep. Yep. Uh, m- mostly because of like the anchoring issue. Like he's just not strong enough yet right now. Physically, I will say Alex R will put on weight and it's not going to be an issue. Yeah. Like truly. Uh, physically, he's going to have no problem adding 15, 20 more pounds. I don't think the shoulders are like broad and strong. Uh, has like a bit of a thin waist right now. And it looks like his lower half is going to be able to like handle more weight that will allow him to anchor more on the interior uh, and box out and hold his position. And when he goes up and contests, when guys go into his body, they will bounce off of him as opposed to like him bending down and then like the arms coming down and it being a foul, right? Uh, Physically, he's going to grow and mature and you can see what he's going to be uh, very easily, I think. It's an easy evaluation in that regard. Offensively, I like the ability to grab and go. I like the ability to, he started his like almost, it's not his default, but like the thing that impresses me most maybe is he will catch at the top and get involved in a dribble handoff with someone like Bryce Cotton or one of those guards and he'll reject the DHO and then just turn and fire as a shooter. That That's like a hard skill for a guy that's that young and that like has that big of hands. His hands are really big. Um, that has like that high of a center of gravity as well. That is, that is a difficult shot and he's capable of doing it uh, just in terms of balance, the shooting. I think that he is, I think he very clearly has touch. Yep. I think there's just a lot going on. And I think that as he works to simplify like his movements, uh, it will be a little bit easier for him to be consistent as a shooter. Like he has a bit of like upward, like backward movement yep. toward his face, just a little bit. Yep. Uh, and he has like, kind of like this weird, like he like brings the ball up. Like his wrist is like almost locked the whole time. It feels like, as he's shooting, like he brings it up and then he like brings it back real quick and unlocks it. And then it goes like, it feels like he brings it up locked and then brings it back and then goes uh, with the shot. So it's going to take, I think his consistency could be ironed out maybe is a fair way to put it. Um, Balance wise. Like I think that like sometimes it it seems like his core is kind of going all over the place. Uh, But to me, like, you know, someone in the comments asked, is Sar going to be more of a perimeter oriented and help defender or more of a defensive anchor and paint player? Uh, It's a great question. I think it's going to be like a Jaron Jackson style, like perimeter oriented help defender. Yeah, more it's, than anything. It, it's funny. I had three questions and we won't get to all of them, but I had three questions for you, Sam. And that was legitimately one of mine. What is the defensive role? Is he a five man defensive anger anchor or roaming off yeah. the ball? So this was something exactly that I was curious. I see that as well. I see more of like this roamer cover ground, all the stuff you've outlined. The other question that I thought was interesting. What is the offensive role, Sam? And we've talked about this, you know, just over. I've context. had this conversation with a lot of NBA people. And, and how far worked, away yeah. is it, Sam? How far? Because I do, I think there's a little bit of, I don't even know if coordination is the right word, but it seems a little bit loose at times. And he doesn't always have control of his limbs completely. It's probably, balance yeah. is probably the better word. Core strength. I think he's a little closer than I think what a lot of NBA people think. I think I'm a little higher on how close he is. I think that these would not be questions if we weren't talking about him as like a top potentially number one pick or like top three pick. Yes. I think if we're talking about him, like, you know, seven, eight, nine, which like in a normal draft, like last year's draft, like I think he probably goes seven, eight or nine. Yep. Um, Probably probably like nine um, to be honest as of right now with what I've seen, at least these evaluations are fluid. It's very early in the season. Yeah. I was just, I was just thinking through the draft picks, like who was it? Not, I think I had a pretty solid top nine. I think he probably would have ended up in it, but yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Uh, Sar, 
the, so much of it depends on how the frame develops. If he can be a five, like if he can play the five and anchor and be strong and physical, these questions take care of themselves and he can be like a marginal advantage player uh, in that respect. If he can even be a closing five, like a bam at a bio or something. And I, I don't think he's bam. I, I want to be clear about that. Like bam's center of gravity is a little bit lower. He moves better on the perimeter than Alex Sar does always has. Uh, he is just stronger. Like he's 250 pounds, whereas Alex's body is a little bit more elongated. It's not quite as physical, but Alex is longer. Like, and he's, you know, able to protect the rim at a stronger level than bam is realistically a lot of the time. But if he can get that strength and that power to his game, I think that there is a lot of potential upside for him to play as a five. And if he's a five, these questions answer themselves and it's like not a problem. Yep. Uh, if he's a four, he's going to have to shoot. Like yep. he's just going to have to shoot and grab and go on the break and do some of the other stuff he can. But if he's a four, he's going to have to shoot it. And I think he will. The question is at what volume? I don't have an answer on that yet. Yeah, no, I agree. There's I, what, what I, do I you think, think the role is? I think he's going to end up being more perimeter oriented offensively. Like I think yeah. I've, as I watch every game, I get the vibe more and more. He wants to be a four or that's yes. the way he's playing right now. Or however you want to say it is, it seems like every game he almost like drifts further away from the rim. And that's why in the notes on this very last game I watched, I said, man, I love seeing this stuff, but I really would like to, I think I even put in there like Trenton flowers was guarding him. I believe in that game. And I just wanted to see him go nothing against Trenton flowers. So nobody take this the wrong way, but I'm like, we'll, I just wanted to see we'll him. Go, about Trenton. Yeah. I, would, yeah. I just wanted to go see him bury somebody smaller than him on the block. You know, like just go post him up, catch it, turn and jump hook or whatever. That's where the high center of gravity, I think, comes in. I, I don't really see him ever as like a post threat. Sure. But in the NBA, that's okay. Like at FIBA level, it would be a problem. Yeah. But in the NBA, it's not really a problem because yeah. he's going to be a rim runner. And I, I, that's where I hope – that's what I would like to see him improve at this year. I, I would like to see him be in the minutes where Keanu Pinder is not on the court. And I would imagine they're going to probably try – Perth will probably try and have one of Pinder or Sar on the court at all times. In the minutes without Pinder, I would like to see him be like a rim runner more often. Uh, attack the basket and go. Uh, may maybe even like you short roll and catch and you put the ball on the deck once and go. I think he yep. can do that. His finishing touch around the basket is something I want to learn a little bit more about, yep. I think. Uh, th that's, a, that's a real question maybe is the way to put it for me. Not, not like, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying it's good. I, I want to learn more about how strong he is as a finisher at the best at the basket. Um, but to me in this class where this is not a strong class is at the top, Bryce and I have talked about this ad nauseum. I think at this point, this is not a great class at the top of the draft. I see him as a top three pick right now. And I think Alex Sar is a genuine contender to go number one overall in this draft. If the offense improves like in a real way and he is efficient as a scorer on the interior and knocks down threes, depending on who gets that number one overall pick, they could really, I think, sell themselves on Alex Sar being the best long-term asset in this draft. And again, at some point on this channel on YouTube, I'm going to do like a deep dive into the ignite tape more than anything. Um, but having seen him in person now, he is, he's a really, really special athlete for how big he is. His fluidity, his ground coverage. It's a, it's a different deal. Yep. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you. I, again, I turned the film on. I loved it when I did that. Every game I've watched so far, I felt the same way. I thought, like, again, I'm interested to see how I feel over uh, the next five games I watch of him because I can already feel myself now really watching the details and the places I can mm -hmm. pick him apart, not in a negative way, but in 
hey, if I'm going to go on Game Theory Podcast and say that I think you might be the number one pick, I better know what your flaws are too and you know, speak about those as well. So It's, it's the offensive role. It's yeah. what is the offensive role is the big question for him right now. Yeah, but I, I told you this. I, I wish I would have had the guts to say it my very first time with you, I think I asked you the question about, you know, a potential number one pick. And in my head, I was going, just say Alex Sar, just say Alex Sar. And I chickened out and I, you know, now everybody's on, on it and rightfully so. Cause he's been really impressive with the data we have.